This question, we are supposed to compute some derivatives. This one may seem a little strange because they didn't actually give us the f and the g function. What they did is gave us the function values and the derivative values at certain x value. All the x values are 8, which means that the x values better be 8 in our problem, which they are. And this should be enough information. Let's go ahead and do the first part. So 2f8 minus 5g of 8. All you need to do is swap in the f of 8 and g of 8 values, negative 1 and positive 1 respectively. And simplify that down, and that's your first answer right there. That's not a uh, calculus, that's just regular, uh, regular algebra there. Now, the calculus part, part two, this is a derivative. We're taking the derivative of all this. So let's write it out exactly as it's written here on this problem, and then we'll write it slightly differently. So we have 2f minus 5g of 8. That's an ugly g, but that's okay. So I'm going to write the whole thing uh, in a one big parenthesis, and I'm going to rewrite f of 8 minus 5g of 8. There is one danger of this, because when you write it like this, you're go going to have already plugged in your value uh, if you write your derivative out there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. This is incorrect, but I just want you to see what happens if you keep going. So I'm going to go ahead, f of 8. We already have computed this in the above step, which I was too lazy to finish. Negative 7. So I just evaluated that above and got negative 7. Now I'm going to apply the derivative. And what's the derivative of any number? It's always 0. And that's not what's under here. It's not 0. All right, so what's going on? We plugged in, and that's why I used a not equal right here. We plugged in the value before the derivative, and that's not good. There's a few ways uh, to take care of this. Usually, we will take the derivative first and plug in the value second, and, oops, totally forgot the g of x. And when you do that, you need to take the derivative with x's in there. Sometimes your variable might be t, but you need to take your derivative with the variable in, not the values plugged in. So somewhere we have to indicate that I'm going to be plugging in values for x. And so the way we do that, there's a few ways to do it. One of them is to write a vertical line like this. And at the bottom, you write x equals 8. And this symbol right here, I'll circle it. This symbol, this vertical bar, means evaluate at x equals 8. And because it's outside the derivative, it means do the derivative first and evaluate this second. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Take the derivative first and evaluate this second. So derivative. First up, we're going to apply it to subtraction. So I'm splitting the derivative over subtraction. Still evaluating x equals 8. We'll do that at the very end. That's the last step. And now with the constant multiple rule, these two constant multiples can be brought out front. So we have 2 f of x prime minus 5 g of x prime evaluated at x equals 8. And I know this is painstakingly slow for some of you if you've taken several derivatives. This is just the sum and the constant multiple rule. Notice there is no product rule here. If there was a product rule, it would be a lot more exciting. Uh, but there's no product. There was just a subtraction. All right. We're going to rewrite that. That's just f prime of x minus 5g prime of x, and now we're evaluating at x equals 8. 
I've taken the derivatives technically. So we have 2f prime of 8 minus 5g prime of 8. And these values are given up above. Notice they are not the same as regular f of 8 and g of 8. These are the f prime of 8 and g prime of 8. So f prime of 8 is 4. g prime of 8 was 2. And this is 8 minus 10, negative 2. And we'll uncover that, negative 2. Okay, so all you're doing is applying the derivative to subtraction and then the constant multiples. Can you do this in one step? Absolutely, you can do this in one step if you feel comfortable doing it.